G'day, I'm Bruce, and today we're here to retrieve this two-stroke GM V8 diesel. This one came out of a Caterpillar scraper, and it's been resting here for about 19 years. So um, we're going to take it home and see if we can get it to run again. Been hemmed in this shed, and it's been surrounded by a lot of other equipment. So a lot of stuff has been moved out the way. So we're going to come in with a small Caterpillar excavator and see if we can pick it up, move it out, and put it on a trailer and take it home. We've got to bring the um, excavator in in through this bit of an alleyway here and when we get close to it we've got to swing the D7 there's a D7 engine here we've got to swing it out the way see if we can put it over to the side so we can get a go at picking up that GM engine it's a fair bit bigger than what we expected so we don't know whether our excavator is going to be able to pick it up off the ground even it's a pretty fair lump of metal This gives a bit more of an indication just how big this thing really is. She's a certainly big, big lump of metal, all right. Yeah, the turbo one of the things about the size of the excavator bucket when you look at it, she's got a pretty big snail sitting on the back here. We did a bit of research after we got in here and really looked like we we're gonna have a go at it. And it looks like without the turbo, the thing might be about 900 kilos. Just one of those tedious jobs of just inch by inch. There's a piece of tin under the bell housing there at the back. There's also another piece of tin, which I think has just been left behind at the front. Well, we finally got the V8 two-stroke GM out where it can actually see daylight. Somehow we're going to try and have to lift it up in the air with an engine crane plus the excavator. And then if we can get it high enough, we'll put it on the trailer sit on a pallet, tie it down to the pallet. When we get home, we'll have to try and maybe get the Ford tractor with some forks or something and see if that'll pick it up, take it off. You can see where it's come from. It's certainly come a long way from, from right in the back of the shed, just about right at the back of the shed. Not quite, but yeah, the other problem with this job was most times we probably wouldn't use the excavator, we'd probably try and use something bigger. But because we've got such a narrow alleyway to get in, and the excavator's not very wide, so we thought, well, the excavator's probably going to get in here easier than anything else. The other thing with an excavator, you can move things sideways, push things around a bit with a bucket, and they're quite manoeuvrable. They can sort of skid them around a bit if they start running off course. And of course, we had to shift the D7 engine off to the side because it was sort of, it was the main thing that was in the way. But uh, Alan had been very busy here, I don't know, for a long time to clear a pass uh, to even to get in here. So it's been a fair bit of work, probably mainly on Alan's part to try and make it so we could get in here and have a go at dragging it out. We've got it strapped to the pallet now, and we're going to try and see if we can winch it onto the back of a car trailer. Don't know how it's going to go, but, we, but you know, we're going to try. Yeah, they'll probably do. Well, it's on there. What an effort. Finally loaded. It's all on the trailer now. Tethered down nice and tight. So we're ready for our trip back home. It's been a pretty hot day out here today too, so we'll be glad to have a cold drink of water. <laughs> We got it home, we got it off the trailer, it's been a really big day and uh, it really needs a clean up 
and um, we're going to start at the top and probably clean it from the top down and we're going to look into some way we can lift it up off the ground and pull the sump off have a bit of a look inside at the big ends and what we'll do then we'll pull the tablet covers off and we'll just check that nothing's stuck underneath there the injectors are not stuck wide open and uh, obviously we're going to have to get some bolts and stuff to bolt the starter motor on and we might even have to try and make up some legs or something for it to stand on because thing supposed to weigh close to a ton if it falls over on the ground when we've got it running we're in big trouble then we're going to give it a pressure wash uh, if we're going to pull the tappet cover or any other parts off maybe even the sump to have a look in there we don't want a heap of dirt falling back inside so it's easy just to clean it up and get it over and done with We've given it a clean now, so we'll probably um, pull a tablet cover off and have a bit of a look inside then see how clean or dirty it is inside. I'm just going to go through and check how many things are seized up on this thing and just going to have a look at things like these levers and that, they look like they're free. So we're just going to work our way through, check underneath the tablet cover and through the week we might see what sort of parts we need to get to see what we need to get it going, so to speak. So we'll just pull these tablet covers off and see what sort of mysteries are waiting underneath there for us. Let's grab that socket off of there. Looks like that should lift off now. clean or dirty there's underneath well I'm surprised at that that looks pretty clean really surprised I don't think it'd be that clean so oh well that's a good sign I've seen some pre pretty dirty engines in my time this has all been undone here so someone's in be been in here before looking at this obviously and uh a lot of that stuff is disconnected. So I'll have to go through there and uh, check those rods. Oh, that's the rod that runs through over to there, laying in the bottom there. And what is going on there? Oh, that's undone there. Yep. I thought something was broken for a while, but oh well, we'll go around and have a look at the other side and see what's waiting for us around there. Something 
Hands undone. I've got that. Might have a bit of trouble pulling this tablet cover up because it's got that D-link and a hook and a strap running across the front there. Might be able to get it without taking that strap off. take these straps off we're not going to do much good one there now we might be right still some dirty stuff laying around there Get that clamp down disconnected too, exactly the same as the other one. It's got the rod line on the bottom there. Will that lift out? No, they've just started the bolts. So obviously someone's been in there and and pulled that off. So we're just going to have a look and we'll have to have a look and see where they're all free, but I'm not going to be able to do that just now. I'm going to have to get a screwdriver. Or... Get a play in that one. Yep. Yep. Yep, those two are down, these two are up the look of it. Yep, full valve motor. Must only have real little tiny real little tiny bolts on them. To pull that off out of the way so we can do the next step and have a look at the have a look at whether the injectors or whatever are seized. I think that's it there. Any little, little tiny bolts, aren't they? Little tiny fellas. Gonna be a bit awkward to get in there to get at that one. Can watch out that doesn't drop down the hole too, that one. Pretty close to the edge. I'm not even sure if I've got exactly the right spanner. No, I haven't. That's actually mashed a bit on the end of that. Um, where are we now? Go back to this one. Yeah, it's definitely been pulled apart before because the sump's only got a few bolts holding it on. So it's been off before. This has been off before because these rods have been disconnected from these linkages over here. And this rod goes through and hooks up to over there, which hooks up to here, where that split pin and that is on there. And then obviously this piece here, it's got to hook up to these. I need a rag to wipe my hands off. And we need to know whether these here are seized up. Look like they are. That one isn't. That one's right. That one is seized. That one's seized. And that one's a little bit sticky, but yeah, so that would probably be the first thing we have to do is try and unseize those two. And uh, I don't know whether I can check these. That one there is definitely seized. That one will move just slightly. We'll say it's nearly seized. That one's seized. And that one there is seized. So there's only about two two in the whole engine that are free. I'm just going to undo these lines along here. Probably have to undo both ends to swing them out of the way. I'm going to put some of this bolt off, spray some of this down their neck and uh, probably let that sit out in the sun for a couple of days and see if that looks like freeing them up a bit. And uh, we can pull the cap off this turbo if I can get it off. Yep. And see if the impeller has got any play in it. That feels pretty good. I can't make the impeller touch the housing, so looks like the turbo and there's no big no big gouges on the blades where where bad stuff has gone through. So that looks promising and it's been sealed up so someone's obviously tried to keep the dirt dirt in the hornet's nest out of it. So that's a positive. So a lot of these things like this, they're just a mystery. Like we don't know whether we've got um, scrap metal or whether we've got something that could be good. We really don't know. 
If you're going to get turned, make sure we get all this stuff, get all that stuff free. Then we're going to try and probably lay the engine over on this side. This side's got the, the water on the side there where the starter motor bolts on. And we'll probably have to put a block of wood somewhere under here to make it so we can actually get the sump off the thing. Have a look underneath the, at what the um, big end bearings and that are like. Probably take a couple of caps off. Probably just see what the bearings are like, whether they're in good nick or bad. We'll probably see if there's any metal on the bottom of the sump, but I mean, you can't go by that either because if somebody else has had the sump off, they probably cleaned it out anyway. So it's always a mystery box whether you're going to we get something good or we're going to get something that's well and truly worn out. So we won't know till we do a few more tests on it. We probably damaged the sump and all, all the snigging and that dragging to get it out, even though we did have it sitting on, on pieces of tin while we were skidding it along. So, we, you know, it was in such a corner where it was sitting. So we don't know whether we've actually damaged the sump or whether it was damaged before we got it. But um, we'll have to pull the sump off and try and panel beat it out, have a look at the pickup and everything, see if anything under there has been damaged. Going by the engine number, this is, is it some sort of special application engine. So we don't know whether that means gen set, big pump, we don't know. We don't know what the special application really covers. Um, and at the moment, it's got a tin sump on there. We won't know. We're going to roll it over, pull the sump off, see how damaged the sump is from all the, the trip home and all the, all, all the fight to get it out from where it was sitting. And uh, we think it probably should have some sort of cast sump. We're not sure whether it should have a cast iron sump or a cast aluminium sump on it. For the moment, that's probably about as far as we can go. We'll check the starter motor. We haven't tried it to see if it'll run, but we've got the starter motor there. And uh, we'll do a bench test on it. And we haven't even really had a good look at it yet to even find out whether it's 12 volt or 24 volt. So this is about as far as we can go at this stage until we advance a bit more. That'll be it for this video. If you know anything much about these engines, feel free to leave a comment. And uh, we'd be most interested to hear from you if you know a fair bit about these engines. Give us a few tips maybe because that's what we could probably do with. And uh, thanks very much for watching.